Hello YouTube. <clears throat> we have um, something new today. This is the SIG P320 and uh, I grabbed this uh, because um, SIG just got the army contract and we'll be converting this with a few minor changes into the M17 and that's going to become the army's new pistol. But either way I wanted to uh, grab one of the commercial ones and uh, run through it with you guys because it's got a lot of really neat stuff. And so we're just going to get into it. Uh, the magazine release um, is, you can change it around to make it left or right handed. I believe one of the changes that the Army wants is it to just be ambidextrous all the time. Uh, I looked up the list and forgot it already. But anywho, um, it, no external safety on this one. I think that that's another thing the Army wanted was a thumb safety, but... Uh, there is um, one mechanism that's going to actually affect this while we're going to take it down, which is if there's a magazine in it, you cannot operate the takedown lever. So that is a safety. It's a weird concept of a magazine safety. It's not that the magazine has to be in for it to fire, but it can't be disassembled with a magazine in. So uh, to disassemble it, lock it back, no magazine, and then rotate this down. Now mine is brand new, so it's really stiff, but it will with great effort flip all the way into the takedown position um, it will hopefully break in with time at that point you then simply release it and slide all the way forward I'm going to set the frame aside and we're going to dig into the slide now unlike most SIGs it has a captivated recoil spring and it is a metal recoil rod it looks like if you uh, needed to replace the flat wound spring which is also nice, SIG is getting away from the the uh, wound coil springs. I think if you would just put a screwdriver in there and you could wrench this, it would actually come unscrewed somewhere. But since I haven't actually studied which end is the good end and I don't actually need to take it apart right now, I'm not going to. Um, because it is an assembly and it is sold as such. So buying new springs from SIG won't be an option. You're going to end up having to buy the assembly. Uh, I'm sure Wolf will make some spring springs without the assembly, but neither here nor there. Uh, barrel lifts out as usual. Nothing really jumping out at, you know, about the barrel. Um, I haven't actually fired this one yet. Just picked it up today. Uh, so it looks like fairly standard tipping barrel mechanism. Now, I will caution you. Um, uh, it might look like other striker fired guns to some degree, but very quickly you will get a sense that it is a little bit different. And uh, to focus on some of those differences, we're just going to illustrate this little thin lever here. That's the firing pin safety. And the striker, really not a large striker, uh, can't go forward unless the firing pin safety is depressed. So. I'm just trying to do this so you can actually see it. If I push that down, then the striker can come forward, and in its forward position, we see it protruding from the firing pin hole. All that's normal, so to speak. Um, but you will notice there's just an awful lot of littler bits, and when we get inside, it's going to get worse. Um, the extractor uh, is visible on the outside with a, you know, kind of loaded chamber indicator. Um, but that's actually uh, what's holding in the back plate. So uh, the back plate is held in by the, um, the tail of the extractor rod. And so what you want to do is push this in, and it's not going to go real far in, but that's going to enough that you can start moving it off. And uh, then you can slide the back plate all the way off. Now, what you'll see here is that there's just a little curved cut out there. That's what that piece was locking into. So that's all that's holding that whole back plate on there. And the uh, striker itself, um, you'll notice it pushes in a little bit. So it does, you do have to start it in to get the back plate moving on, but not a lot. Um, so when you're putting it back together, you really just have to push that in a little bit to get it started and then the back plate will actually slide all the way on it's just not being retained and so you, you push it halfway off put the retaining push in 
and that that'll hold it back together afterwards so anyway since we're disassembling not assembling we're just gonna pop that off I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the extractor um, well it's the extractor you know I don't even know their name for this piece yet so this is the actual plunger for the extractor the extractor spring and extractor rod slash back plate holding in thing and then the extractor will just uh, tip out at that point the extractor is not extra tall or anything um, it it looks all crazy because it has to be contoured with the gun but really uh, at the end of the day it's coming in uh, just straight you know, down catching the round uh, just shy of halfway point um, and now um, the other thing you might notice at this point is the striker mechanism will move out somewhat and you want to be careful because here's where little things are going to start to go crazy on you um, So first of all, uh, there's a couple different options you have for how you want to take it apart and how much spring tension there's going to be. So with the uh, firing pin safety in its up position, if you release it, that actually lets the striker come all the way forward and gives you a little more play. But the key here is hang on to the striker as it comes out because there's an itty bitty spring and I just got mine caddy corner off there we go there's an itty bitty spring here on the side and mine slipped off as I was taking it out I'm gonna put it back on to show you where it actually goes so this is the spring we're talking about and it's the spring that puts the pressure on the firing pin safety and if you look it has a long leg and a short leg the short leg is the bottom and the loop goes on that little stud right there so with that in place and on the stud i can then use my well what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring the firing pin safety into its up position and then i can just thumbnail it down and it's going to want to pop out because there's really it's only being in the slide that holds this thing together so if I pop it out to that far where it can actually do its job you can see that it goes up and down like that but again I'm holding the whole thing together now the way that this hooks in here and interacts with the striker I don't think we can actually get that out till the um, till the striker is free from the rest of the assembly so I'm gonna come in here and take this spring out on purpose now and launch it into my lap hang on a second let me grab that that's one thing I hate about tiny, tiny springs. Is their propensity to launch themselves. And uh, in case you're curious, no, this isn't the smallest spring we're going to encounter in the slide alone. So again, just set that guy aside so you don't lose him. Now, there's nothing else in the slide at this point uh, so when you're cleaning it that's kind of nice and easy just don't lose all the little bits of this so now it's uh, similar to other striker fired guns and the rest of the takedown you have spring cups up here and you need to compress the firing pin spring to get those off if you just push the firing spring firing pin in though it's going to just compress the whole thing so you kind of have to get a, a finger under the striker and then pull down on the spring to separate it from the top. So again, I'm just putting my finger under there to keep the striker from going down as I compress the spring. And then I want to get in here. And these are pretty beefy spring cups. They will launch across the room, of course, if you're not careful. Um, and they are, if you uh, remember the Glock, um, the reason that these ones have channels on the side is similar reason that you can buy the Glock Maritime spring cups with channels is that that actually helps the thing fire underwater. Now, before you do what I just did and drop this out, there's another spring in here that you have to be aware of. Um, now that the main firing spring is, is off, if you notice, there's resistance. There's another spring that you can't really see, 
while this thing is put together. So um, again, now our firing pin safety can't come all the way out yet. Uh, it's, it's in the way. So basically it blocks the striker from going any more than that far forward. When it's down, the striker can come the rest of the way, but there's a return spring operating in there. So letting the firing pin safety come all the way down, you can pull this out. And if you look from the back, actually, now that it's out, now the firing pin safety will be able to lift out because this firing pin's not in the way. So what's left in here is one last spring. And what's going on is this little channel over here on the side. Notice there's a, a, a dimple on the striker that lines up. There is a spring in that channel so that when this goes forward, that dimple is actually compressing that spring. And this is a tiny, tiny spring. Here it is, just fell out through the front. Oh boy. This guy is about as fragile and tiny a part as, as there is in firearms. So uh, not sure what the logic was other than probably don't disassemble this at home. By the way, SIG calls out absolutely never do this at home. So if you're this far, you've already voided your warranty. Well done. So anyway, to get this guy back in, he just drops into that channel and we're going to put the firing pin safety back in because uh, you kind of have to put it because of the curve on it. Let's actually take two seconds to think about how this actually works. And uh, basically, if you see this notch right there, when this firing pin safety is up, it catches in that notch. When something pushes the firing pin safety down, it just ignores that notch. But basically, that little tail end catches up there. And when that's down, then it can go forward. So that, that's the whole mechanism of the firing pin safety. Very small, but uh, presumably effective enough. Uh, now, because that has to turn at a 90 degree angle, you kind of need to put it in and get it set down in there first. Make sure the tiny, tiny spring didn't come out. Get the striker back in. Now, at this point, the firing pin safety will flop around, but it really, not without a great deal of wiggling, I don't think it can actually fall all the way out. So that's enough, and uh, again, make sure you feel the resistance of the small spring to know that it's all in place. And we're gonna go ahead and throw the, the main spring and spring cups back on. And again, parking a finger underneath the uh, striker um, to keep it from falling all the way down, and then compressing this spring. And then the spring cups, you just wanna bring in uh, so they just get under the that neck of the firing pin, excuse me, of the striker. And same thing on the other side. Oops. There we go. So, um, from an orientation standpoint, it really doesn't matter uh, which angle these, these spring cups are at. Um, I suspect that you know, like the same advice on the Glock, try and keep the uh, the separator on the spring cups away from the actual spring end there so it doesn't dig into them. But I don't think it's going to be a big deal, especially not on cups that beefy. Now, uh, again, to get this spring in place uh, with the firing pin safety in its you know up position, essentially, you're going to park the... Uh, the loop of the spring on the little stud and um, then just uh, getting the firing pin into its upmost position you can then bring down and move that spring down with your thumbnail and again keeping the back of it pressed into that little groove otherwise it'll pop out like that and then you just push it back in and make sure that the spring didn't get underneath it these are tiny tiny parts here but that is the whole assembly, and if you can keep, keep, whoops, there you go, it keeps slipping out of place. I have to keep double checking my spring. Yeah. So if you keep hold of all that, then you just slide that whole assembly back in, and once it's, once it's that far into the gun, essentially, then uh, you're you're in a much better place now. If I slide it all the way in, I hear it snap and the firing pin safety comes up. 
and it actually will retain itself, you know, right there. I mean, it's not really retaining itself. You can move the whole thing back, but you're no longer getting spring force pushing you back. Whereas if the firing pin safety gets tripped, then you've got, you know, more spring force back here. So push that all the way in until the safety engages. That way we only have to deal with this little bit of motion when we're putting it all back together. Uh, the extractor, drop the extractor back in. And all you have to worry about getting this in is, you know, it's a, a half pin end and the, the, the top half is this part that, that's on to the outside of the extractor. This is the inside, this is the outside. And you'll be able to see that as you slide it in through the, through the hole, that channel, as it comes up against the back of the extractor. If you're off by, 50, you know, by a few degrees, it doesn't come all the way out. When, when you've got it in the correct orientation, however, doo -doo 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 -doo. I spun it so much I can't even tell what the correct orientation is. There we go. Snaps right over the end of the extractor, holding the extractor in. And now we're ready to put it back together. So what I like to do is, uh, um, let's see how to, how to explain this again. I'm just gonna push in with my finger to get this started and now it's all the way in but nothing's holding it again and so now I'm going to back the cover plate off about halfway so that it's past this piece push this in and then slide the cover plate back on and let it lock in and engage that cover plate and that's how the slide locks back up Barrel in, um, because this is the full length version, the, the guide rod actually goes pretty far in there. If you've got, this is the 4.7 inch, I think there's a 3.9 inch where it kind of ends right there and it's a little bit different looking. But that's our slide. And so now we're gonna get into the fun parts. So uh, this is a design that I think they started with well, I don't know, Sig's probably done several different guns with it, but the one I remember most is the 250. Basically, um, the, the polymer frame here isn't the true gun frame. So it's the frame in terms of it's the part you hold. Uh, oh, by the way, let me, let me start over since I'm just doing that without explaining what I'm doing here. Um, with the gun in the takedown position, it's like this. If you begin to rotate the takedown lever and then s gently pull outward on it at the same time, you'll find that it, it rotates itself halfway loose. And then if you just keep rotating it, you'll find angles at which the whole thing will come out. Um, there is a little rubber O-ring on this to, to uh, help it stay in place, and that's kind of nice. There's other things that retain this in there as well. But now here's the cool part. Now that we have that out, if you lift up by the front rails and um, once you get it coming a little bit up then slide it forward from the back then uh, oop, doo -doo -doo -doo. Whoa, it's very greasy on this version Ugh. the whole thing lifts out so that mechanism wow they put a lot of weight lifting <laughs> grease on that um, so normally, uh, there's a lot of guns with this kind of design. There's usually more pins holding them in. In this case, it's just the one pin, and then the, the back of it slides into grooves um, that engage into the, into the frame. But this is the cool part. That's the serial number. It's not on the polymer. So this polymer is not the serialized part. You can get an aftermarket frame and it's not, you don't have to transfer it. The transferable part is actually this metal bit on the inside. And if, as we get in there, you're going to see that SIG's got their logo on it and uh, all the other information that they put on, you know, the serialized part of the gun. Because in this case, it is this in, inner steel chassis, not the plastic bit, that is the actual gun. So this whole thing is the same from, uh, 
SIG to SIG, if I could take this and drop it into the 3.9 inch version and it's the same, this, this is the gun and it is interchangeable in the various frames. And that's great for, for fixing it. Um, basically, uh, if I recall the 250, I feel it was thinner than this one. And I've seen a lot of them where they have this, but it's a, a multi-piece unit. Essentially, this steel frame here, it's very thick. Um, I mean, it's still stamped out, but I mean, it's huge. And so it's beefy. You're not going to bend it. It's not going to go anywhere. And so all the other parts go into the frame. And to be honest, almost all of them are going to come out without, uh, without even needing a hammer to hit it, but they do get complicated. So we'll get into this in a second. What, before we do, let's go ahead and deal with the one part that's left over in here, which is the magazine release. And what do you do if you want to change it around? And the answer is, uh, if you look in the manual, it says get a paper clip. I don't have a paper clip, so I'm going to see if this punch is too thick or not. It feels like it's a little thicker than I want. Essentially, uh, when I push out on the uh, left side thumb magazine release, you see that pop out and there's a hole. And basically what we're doing is we're looking for a piece of metal small enough to shove into that hole. And uh, like I said, the safety, uh, excuse me, the paper clip is what they recommend. I'm going to see if I got a piece of wire stock that's going to do it. And uh, oops, apparently not. <laughs> I'll find something thin enough to get in there. failing completely. If I were doing this correctly, oh yeah, I'm pushing it the wrong way. All right, so I think once I get this pushed in, I want to lift up on this forward little triangular piece. So I'm gonna get my fingernail poised to do that first this time. I'll try it with my thumbnail maybe. Seriously, this is supposed to be the easy part that you don't need any experience or expertise to do. I can take apart everything else. I can't get the steel of safety off. <laughs> I'm looking around to see if I actually have a... Uh, paper clip and I don't. It's not the kind of tool I always have handy. There we go. Alright, so that's in there. This is so funny. So I'm going to actually do something that I only do in times of great desperation. RTFM. Alright, magazine catch, removal, and reversal. Shove in a paper clip. Remove the stop 
which is the little triangular piece. Well, golly, it should be easier than it is. Apparently, I just stink. Let's try that one more time. Yeah, I bet this is too big. Hmm. Do I have anything smaller? Uh, if I can't get this, we can always just give up and move on. I just thought it would be an easy one. Shows you what I know, huh? That's too funny. Well, I guess when I have the proper tool, i.e. a paper clip, I'll try it again. That's kind of funny. I'm right-handed anyway, so... I will not waste any more time failing to do that. We'll get into the parts that are actually more interesting. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, I'm just going to wipe off the white lithium goo and uh, get into the takedown of this guy. So, lots of different bits here that we can take apart in different orders. I'm going to try and make this in a relatively logical order. Um, let's see. So there's a couple interesting things that we can see uh, before we get in here. One is um, that the uh, the, the the takedown when you when you take this down, um, this piece here gets uh, pushed backwards. So. I'm not sure if we can actually demonstrate this, but basically pushing this in. See how that's now further back? So that's part of what we actually accomplish when we do the takedown is we've moved that whole mechanism back. And if you look, what's happened is that this, this piece here has come and tucked itself behind the... Uh, slide lock. So if I lift up on the slide lock, it's going to pop back forward. And there's actually a little hole in the slide lock here to ride up and down on that. So essentially once something pushes it back, which is the actual takedown process, um, and once that levers that big piece towards the back, what holds it there is uh, going to actually be uh, the, the slide lock. And I was hoping we could actually get to the pin that holds that in. Yeah, but no, it's tucked out in the way. Um, either way, that's a safety uh, preventing the gun from firing. Um, so if we actually it's hard to hold this whole thing at once. If we actually do this, are we going to get... Oh, it's still firing. What does that actually do? No, I'm sorry. That's, that's just the magazine check. If the magazine were in the gun, uh, you'll see the magazine can't go in there right now. So if I pop that up... Yeah, so this is where the magazine normally sits in there, and basically, if I tried to manipulate 
the takedown lever, this piece would bump into the magazine and it wouldn't release. So I wouldn't be able to turn this all the way. It would get stuck and uh, it, would, it would go no further. Basically this piece here is going to try and move it back and it's not going to be able to. So I'm going to get it a little bit down but not all the way. And so it doesn't actually, it's not about, like I said, it's not about preventing it from firing, it's preventing it from being disassembled with the magazine in place. So, uh, just for giggles, I'm going to leave it in that locked position. Pull that out. All right, so what is going to be the easiest to deal with first? So the trigger itself um, sits, uh, this is actually part of the trigger. So there's one, one piece of metal here that we see down at the bottom and coming up to hold the trigger bar. And it's one of the first pieces that we can take out. This is not a pin that you push out, that's simply the side of the trigger. And uh, so this pin which holds in the um, magazine release itself, also that other piece. I think we can safely take this guy out. So if we take him out, so much schmutz on it. Now I, I'm holding it down with my finger because there is a spring and it's not really attached. It just sits in there and uh, let me wipe off the goop. And what you'll see is there's actually two pieces at play here. There's a flat wound spring, and then there's this little plug, and the little plug has a small side and a wide side. The wide side here just fits into the flat coils fairly snugly, and then the uh, other side is what fits up into that little divot to hold it positioned, whoops, uh, hold it in position under the uh, slide lock. So it uh, sits on the bottom of the frame, and then that, and then in order to get that pin in, we have to compress it a little bit, and that's what provides the downward force to make the magazine, or excuse me, the slide lock snap back down into position. Uh, here, this is the piece that catches on the magazine itself on the last round. That's the ramp right there. So as the follower comes up that last little bit, it will lift up that and cause the gun to lock back on the last round. And then, of course, when you thumb it down, it releases it. So three pieces here. Uh, try not to, to lose the tiny one. Just going to set those guys aside and their pin. And what I'm trying to remember here is the safest way to rotate this off. So the trigger is going to come out through this little gap in the stainless in the in the steel frame and it has to be rotated at just the right angle for it to come out. So it's not there. Uh, how do we actually get that started? I'm thinking Yes, okay. So what I did just then was uh, played with how high the, uh, the trigger bar was in here because that's part of this thing is to get the trigger bar uh, disengaged at the same time. I gotta think of this through, so bear with me here. Uh, we can push this down and even bring it out to the side somewhat and yes so I brought the trigger bar out to the right side and down below so it came all the way out 
and that's given us a little more angle so now I can get the trigger bar all the way to there and at that point it comes out so uh, I'm gonna do this again without the, the grease on it so you can actually see some of these parts a little better or at least some of the grease off of it I'm holding this into place because we are dealing with a, a big spring still back there Let's give you a clearer view, hopefully an easier shot at it. So again, the starting this in as if it were a pin through the uh, magazine safety and uh, we're going to get it lined up so that it goes into our, our groove here because that's that's the trick to it is that it, it will if, if it's all the way in there and rotated it can't it's it's got to be at this forward kicked angle to do do this so we can get it in there and get our trigger bar lined up with it <laughs> and get him all the way in so he's popped into the side he's caught the trigger bar and once he's further enough along, we can come back here and again, oops, that's probably what I should have done with the disconnector. <clears throat> Let's try that again a little bit easier. So uh, when we get to this, uh, I found that it's easiest to uh, do this um, to put this spring in while everything is loose and then put it under pressure as I get it in there because that's where it actually goes in the gun is all the way in there and I, if you're already under this much tension with this spring I couldn't get it to move to anywhere I needed it to be however we're gonna start with it actually a little bit behind where it's gonna go for real in order to give us the opportunity to get the trigger started in early so again if the trigger is just in here and it's forward, you can't slide it out to the side. It has to be tilted all the way to the front to be able to slide. So the key is that we slide it in. We're not, we can't push it into that gap. It's got to start and, and go in there on its own. And that means that we need the trigger bar to be in such a position where we can get it right underneath that right before he goes all the way in. So basically we need the trigger bar to be <laughs> ow. So uh, oops. Lift him up, move my trigger bar forward, and put him in. So now with the trigger held in place, I can come back here on the trigger bar and actually manipulate it back into where it's supposed to be. And that's inside that little black bit there and so now our trigger trigger bar all doing their job um, by the way this is the piece that lifts the firing pin safety and once that happens then this here is the sear and when I pull the trigger you see it go down and then snap back up as part of the disconnect So, um, again, while the trigger bar is where is is in the right position, the trigger can't come forward enough to release it. So we're going to just grab the trigger bar, pull it down and out, and let it kind of pop behind that other piece, and that's going to let it come back far enough to get the trigger out. Then we can just. Uh, basically release this guy completely and uh, work him off of the spring and then take the spring off of the bottom as well so now we've got our trigger bar spring out of the way our trigger bar out of the way we can see that this is quite a manufacturing accomplishment with all manner of little bits in there and we're going to try and get into what all of them do um, Mainly, uh, what's going to be happening if I try and just manipulate this by hand here is first it 
kicks into this piece and lifts that trigger bar up and then with a little more pressure it runs into the next piece underneath which is the uh, the sear so first is this leg which is the firing pin safety from the underneath and then this bit is going to get behind the uh, wah. sorry about that Bumble fingers there we go it's going to actually get behind here and this this piece here is the uh, the sear so the trigger bar is going to grab the back of that sear and uh, that's what's rotating this piece down so we're going to get into all that shortly but now that we've got it this far we can actually see uh, I believe we can get this piece out of our way so I'm going to I'm going to study this for a second because the last one I took apart, this pin was solid. This one's got a hollow pin for some reason. That worries me. It worries me that it's a different mechanism for some reason. Uh, I'm going to say I hope not. Let's give it the old gentle tap with a hammer and see for, for realsies. Uh, huh. How very, very odd. So really, this really just serves to stabilize this piece, um, which is why I don't think it's a big deal to take it out. Uh, curiously... I was working on one of these at the shop the other day, and this piece uh, was actually just drifted in there without any tension. They appear to have changed their minds a little bit and made it so that piece is a little harder to get out. Now, um, there is still a mechanism going on back here. Uh, if I just tried to push this, it's kind of tough to push because there's a spring in there. So if we look right in back in there, there's a coil spring, and this piece is actually compressing it. So what we actually have to do is uh, this actually dig. It has a piece that goes inside there, and we'll see how that's shaped when we get it out. Um, essentially, though, you don't have a whole lot of room to work with <laughs> with it here. So one of the things that we can do is actually... Uh, it, it's come into its forward position again because of me monkeying with it. So what we want to do is just move it uh, into the rearward position again uh, against that spring. And I think it will snap into place. And then we can... Uh, well, I guess it's not going to snap anymore because the sear's not there for it. Oh, right, because the we took the magazine... We took the slide lock back, which was what was holding it back for us. All right, so... One more time, we're just going to push this guy back. Oh, I say that, but it is tough. And once it's back... Realistically, this should not be this hard. Yeah, I'm just making this harder than it needs to be. Sorry. Um, essentially, you should be able to lever this out to the side and it will pop off of its spring eventually there we go so if you look at how this is shaped this this is basically so that you can get it in there and draw that spring back and then it the spring will then push over it to keep it from falling off so when we go to put this back in, we got to do two things. Remember to put the inside in first, and then as we come over here for the other bit, basically it'd be like this, and we can't just shove it in there because the spring will be in the way, so we want to go in there with something tiny and pull back the coils of the spring first so that that can get in there on the right side of the coils and then snap in. So uh, getting it out, again, we really are just pushing it past all that stuff and uh, 
it helps a little bit to push it towards the back, but not a ton. So anyway, just don't put a lot of bending force on it, you know, and just work with it. It'll come out. All right, so now front is pretty much empty of bits. And if we, if you get the light just right in there, you can see on the uh, so serial number on the side, but then SIG's logo, Six Hour Inc., Newington, New Hampshire, USA, all stamped on the inside because this is, in fact, you know, the gun from a legal standpoint. All right, so now we've got um, a couple other things left in here. There's the uh, firing pin safety, there's the sear system, and it's got some springs. And then there's this little doohickey spring, which was just holding the giant magazine safety in there. And I will caution you that um, the spring, the sear spring, is actually two coil springs that are standing up underneath these leg, this this end of the sear way back here. So this is the part of the sear that engages the striker, but under here are two springs that we just want to be aware of so they don't launch when we uh, take this apart. Um, there's another tiny spring involved here, which is the spring operating uh, the return one. So the return of the firing pin safety, see how that snaps back forward? If we look, we can see one of the legs of that spring right there, and the other one, if we get enough light on it, you can see the whole coil tucked up in there. Uh, you just got to be aware of that, so to speak. Um, and when I take out this large pin, that's what's actually holding in uh, um, hello, that, that firing pin safety, the sear itself, and the other spring. So those parts are kind of going to come flying out on me. Um, so as I push this through, now this one, not a lot of tension under it, but uh, we know that it's holding in a bunch of springs. So uh, now that the tension's off, you can see the beginnings of those springs. If I, uh, as, as this comes apart, you'll see more of those. But for now, I'm just going to... Um, I'm just going to let these parts drop and you'll get a good view of this spring and its little funky coily legs to make it take up enough room. And uh, then the firing pin safety itself, which I believe due to its shape is actually still held captive in here uh, till the sear itself comes out. Now the sear, um, it pivots around the smaller spring, but it's also partially retained by the large one. So when the large one is in here, that holds the sear down a little bit further, but it actually rotates around this guy. So i set him aside and remember, yeah, again, this guy's not going to be in here under a lot of pressure at this point. So we slide him out and now this whole mechanism is ready to come out. And But as soon as I take the punch out, pieces are going to want to fall out too. So we'll see how much of it I can... Oh, I lied. There's one more pin holding the plastic piece in. All right, so let's lift off the sear from the top. Well, it doesn't really matter here. There we go. So those are those two coily springs I was talking about on the sear. And then the firing pin safety now free to come out. And as we saw, this spring was sitting in here like that, uh, providing the, the force to uh, keep this guy closed. So when we put it all back together, we just got to remember that those things are where they go. Now, without the large or small pin in, this rotates freely around uh, this roll pin. And since we like to take everything all the way apart, by the way, these little springs here, they don't necessarily stay on their little nubs. There are little uh, 
little metal dimples there that they can kind of stick to but uh you know if you can get yours to stick great otherwise you just set the springs down in there and when you push this onto them then they'll make their attachment i'm gonna leave mine attached since they're playing nice for now and real quick knock this roll pin out i'm gonna knock you out i'm gonna knock you out Okay, so roll pin has been freed, which means once I slide the roll pin punch out, now our little plastic block can roll right out and this is the only little springy dingy left and as we said before this was basically what what was holding the spring tension on this piece and uh, it actually just lifts right out and it goes back in pretty much just as easily and um, I, I think from a, a sizing perspective, they made it so you can't really push it all the way through. It's not a, a closed off hole. You can see the other side, but it is curved so that the spring isn't going to really go through it. So again, you can take that out if you, if you really want to get it clean. And you can scrub this guy clean, get all the goop out of there. And uh, here's your chassis. This is I think this is a work of art. Um, not to gush over it, but there it is. Uh, they put an awful lot of that lithium grease on there, and uh, then they give instructions in the manual that says don't use grease. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. <clears throat> um, did we want to look at how any of the rest of this really worked. I guess we want to talk a little bit about how this guy did his job. I'm going to go ahead and pop these springs off so I don't lose them. Set them there. And we're going to talk about how this guy uh, works. So the smaller of the two pins um, is the one that it rotated around. So that is what's holding it in um, like that. So obviously the springs push it up and then other things push it down. But the other thing that I said is that it is also retained, whoops, large pin went in from the other direction. So it's also retained uh, by the large pin and that actually limits how high it can come up. So if I grabbed it now and lifted it up, it really stops. Um, there without the large pin in there it rotates uh, much further all the way up so the large pin is is controlling how high it can actually ever move upwards and um, while I would never modify these parts in theory if you wanted to change some of the trigger pull dynamics you know you could be changing all of those engagements um, and while we've got this off, we can look at how the trigger bar interacted with this bad boy. Um, the trigger bar, I'll actually just take him back out and do this on the outside of the gun. It'll be more clear as to what was going on. So if we put this pin through here and just show it as if it were the inside except it's on the outside now we can see what's going on when we actually uh, pull the trigger which is this the trigger bar is catching the sear there and pulling it uh, forward which amounts to pushing it pushing this bit of it down so remember the striker is going to be held back here on the sear and then uh, there's two surfaces here the, the one that's farthest towards the inside is the one that actually grabs it. So it pulls it forward and then bang, that's pulling it straight down 
off of the striker, striker goes, and gun goes off. Now, the next surface as we work our way in, so this was a surface that pulled the sear down. This surface operated the uh, firing pin safety. So the firing pin safety was the next piece in line. So if we uh, put them together, what you would see is, the, whoops, I didn't actually need to do it like that. The firing pin safety is more tied to the big hole. So I'm going to put the big pin in as well. All right. So the firing pin safety can't go any further down because it runs into this pin, but is not actually retained by the small pin. And uh, the spring, which I can't really put all the way in place and under tension, but essentially the spring sits uh, like I probably could. That was a fun challenge to see if you can get the whole thing put together, but on the outside of the gun. Whoops, sticky fingers. Okay. So that's uh, how this thing sits in here. And this leg of the spring is actually do, 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 on this side of the firing pin safety so that if something lifts it up, it wants to push it back down. Um, so it, it catches in that bottom piece of the safety. So, And uh, again, if we look at what is going to operate that leg, it is in fact that uh, second piece right, right where my uh, fingernail is of the uh, the sear. It's going to come under there and pull that forward. All right, now, now the spring is just getting in our way. <sighs> come on. So let's try and get these relatively close to correct positions. Beautiful. So, as you can see, uh, when this is coming across, the first thing it's going to do is hit the firing pin safety, rotating it upward, and then after it lifts that up a little bit, it'll then run into the sear itself and pull it downward. So, First firing pin safety, then the sear. So that's how it works. Um, we'll look at exactly what gives it the disconnect in a second when we get it back together. It's easier to figure that out when it's a little more assembled than it is right now. So for reassembly, what we're going to do is get this block back in first. And uh, just rotates in from the back. If you try and put it into the front, you run into the ejector. This is the one thing that I think may have been a design error, is that the ejector is also a permanent piece of this frame. To me, the ejector is something which can get broken in various forms of malfunction or abuse. And it's always nice if it's a replaceable piece. It's also a piece that, um, you know, if you want to change the angle of ejection, then you have to change its shape and file on it. And so having it be the prime frame of the gun at the same time, I think was really the only thing I think is a mistake on this gun. Oops. Now I'm just getting this roll pin started uh, with the hammer. I switched to the roll pin punch once it's moving in and once it's all lined up. I think the 
this one's just pretty darn close to centered. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. All right, so now this is in it. Now it's a matter of getting everything assembled in the right order uh, so that you can put it together. Now, a couple important things to remember about that right order. Um, one is once this is in here, then the the firing pin safety really can't uh, be manipulated afterwards. You kind of have to put these guys in at the same time, which means we want to get as much ready as we can to that end. So I'm going to get my two tiny, tiny springs and see if I can't get them to stick onto the little legs there. Uh, oh boy. So tiny. All right. So. This is essentially what we're going for to get the whole thing in at once. just kind of got to manipulate the various parts into more or less their correct position. So the easiest one to nail first is the big hole. Uh, it's not going to keep everything in place, but it's going to keep a lot of stuff in place. You know what? I lied. I'm going to go with a smaller hole. Where am I? I don't know what I'm going to do. Let's start with the big hole, and if we change our mind halfway through, then so be it. So remember that the big hole is not perfectly retaining the sear. It's really just holding it at a certain angle. It's probably going to... Um, do, 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 do. Okay. Um, all right, that's partial success. We're going to have to remember I don't have the spring in there, so we are going to have to get this a little more correctly into place. What I'm trying to work out here is whether or not I've actually got enough room to put in... Oh, no, I'm wrong. All right, all right. Bad decision, bad decision. Gonna go with a small hole first. Go with a small hole first, which means we want to line up. Uh, <laughs> then get this piece in place. There we go. Come on. Okay. So now everything is. Yeah, all right, that was that was the smarter way to do it. All right, small hole first. So essentially, our, our firing pin safety is just hanging on because it can't fall through because the head is just too big. This piece is riding way higher than it should because the big piece holds it in place. And last but not least is our, uh, oops, our firing pin safety um, spring is not in. And so as we put the big pin in, all of that's going to change one piece at a time as we work our way in from the side. So first we're gonna run into the side of the sear and until we push it down, we're not gonna get any further. But once we're there, now, now we're in past the sear. Now the next piece is the firing pin safety itself. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come back on here and poke it into place and we can use the little hole in the side to help line it up but basically that's all we're trying to do here is um, get the firing pin safety lined up with the hole so that that pin can uh, pop through now we're not completely done when it's through because we still got to get the spring in there 
But what I find is easiest to do is once the firing pin safety is on, what we're going to do is we're going to back off the pin. Um, so I can see that the pin is, is past the firing pin safety. I'm going to come in and I'm just going to push that pin back out just a little bit to make room for the spring. So it's still going through the firing pin safety, but now I've opened up just a little bit of space and uh, I'm going to be able to slide the spring. When I say slide, I may need to get some pliers to do that sliding, but essentially if I'm careful, I should be able to slide that spring into place and nudge it with just enough to get it past the uh, the pin. So the pin is now started into the spring. Make sure I'm not catching any of the coils of it and just guide the pin the rest of the way in till it meets up with the other side of the frame. And then we want to check everything. So we can see that one leg of our little spring is caught under the, the black piece, that's right, the other leg is pushing against the, the firing pin safety, so it's got its return pressure. So if we flip the little leg, it snaps back. That's great. We should also now see that when we push that, it goes down, but it doesn't come up any farther than that. All of our back bits are essentially in place. So, uh, reversing everything that we did to get this put back together, let's get that magazine uh, disconnecting chunk back in. And so we want to start this on the inside, and we know we're going to rotate it down into place there, but we've got to get something nice and tiny. So I've got this little glasses screwdriver, I've got the flat blade one that's even better, and I'm just going to use that to grab this coil spring and pull it towards the back. Oops. And then uh, pop that bad boy in. And make sure everybody lines up there. And um, again, pushing against that spring, fairly hard to do with your fingers. But if you get a punch or something, you can get it to pop into that uh, unlocked position. Again, it doesn't really matter. Um, and I think at this point we had, oh yeah, that one pin that is just really for the stability of the system. And uh, your mileage may vary on this pin. Like I said, the, the first one I ever took apart, this pin just slipped right in and out and wasn't actually uh, in under a whole lot of pressure there. launch oh we're good minor launch um. so and all this is held in by the frame itself as well so once these pins are, are in place it's not a whole lot of stuff to worry about all right uh, so this is our, our, our trigger in action here. And again, I'm going to just push it up and forward with my thumbs to see it do its job. So first it engages with the firing pin safety and then it brings down this here. Now, um, there's another thing that happens, uh, which... I am not 100% sure of exactly where. What I'm trying to figure out is exactly how the disconnect works. So we already know that this is going to push on the sear. This is going to push on the firing pin safety. But I believe this little wear mark right here, like one, two, third step down, if we look at it uh, from the back, 
we know that, that that first step is all the way in there on the sear. The second one is the firing pin safety. And lo and behold, right after the firing pin safety, the black body has a curved bit right there that would essentially start this moving downward. So while it would grab the sear, it would also begin moving downward to become its own disconnector. Now, in my head, I feel like that can't be the only disconnector because it wouldn't be safe. But uh, if we think about it, let's um, let's put this together. Uh, remember that this just slides in, uh, and so I, I'm not. This is not the the permanent uh, installation here. I'm just doing this to try and figure out a little bit more about that disconnection stroke because it's bothering me. So if, uh, if this is here, I'm going to use my finger as the, whoops, finger as if it were the, the spring. So sure enough, as I come pulling the trigger, I see that I'm moving the firing pin safety. I'm engaging this here. And see then I, yes, I just bump in and start moving down and that means I drop off the sear so <clears throat> as this is happening we're gonna see firing pin safety come up sear come down but then sear comes back up and so the sear is coming back up because the trigger bar is getting pushed down now normally in a disconnection stroke it tends to be the cycling of the mag of the slide that provides the disconnection i'm not sure what the logic is here because if we really think about it as we start to pull and the sear comes down the gun fires and if i don't keep pulling the trigger till it clicks i haven't gotten my disconnect so i feel like there's the possibility of this not being the only disconnect mechanism, which means something else must push this down somewhere along the way. So as I'm putting it back together, that's what I'm going to be looking for is to see if there is another disconnect mechanism that I haven't spotted yet. So um, this spring uh, hooks in right there, a little U-shaped piece of metal. And uh, this is where it's a little bit feisty and the uh, order in which you do things can start to matter. So uh, I've gone ahead and popped it off of the trigger bar because I want to get this part in first because it goes through that hole and then there's, a, there's this 90 degree, 90 degree bend here. And so that means that in order to get through this hole, we got to push it in, turn it, and then turn it and so when it's all the way in the gun it's going to be up here uh, and actually this would be inside the black bit and uh, this is really the the tricky part and getting that all the way into position and engaging the trigger at the same time so i'm just gonna grab the whole thing and work against the spring force Bruh. Nope, nope, I did it wrong. Don't do that. Never mind. So I got a little overexcited there and forgot what I was doing. So I think what I decided last time was that we really need to start this uh, too far back in order to get it at the point where the trigger is actually in its uh, lineup mode. And from there, now we can get the trigger to just catch it. So the trigger's not quite all the way in yet, but we'll be able to go in if we hold it here. And basically now what we want to do is just grab the trigger bar, pull it down and over, and basically we're just moving this piece inside here. So from here, pull it out, down, in, and over there. So out down in and over and at the same time the trigger is going to walk forward and click into place there 
So now this is providing the upward pressure and everything and the whole thing Um, so again, I'm wondering, you know, if somebody knows of a novel way to get this out without deforming this spring and anything like that, and if there's just an angle that I missed, but as far as I can tell, there, there just wasn't. So again, my, my recommendation here is that you're, uh, you're basically pulling this disconnector or I'm sorry, trigger bar, you know, down and off to the back so that then you can get the trigger into its position and same thing when you're reassembling it is you're really just trying to do the reverse of it get that started and then when you manipulate that into its place that also lets the trigger sink all the way in so if there's a secret sauce there and somebody spots it please leave it in the comments all right, so not a whole lot left here. We're coming up. We've got this big guy. I got a little more goop to get off of him. And, uh, whoops. So um, the easiest way, I think, to do this is to just set the spring down and uh, we're just going to kind of guide it into place by putting this over it. So if we can get it close to the center, then we can get it onto the hole. And then from there, we can it, it'll move along with the rest of it. And uh, then it's the big pin that holds it all together. So once it's in the right spot, you are, you're going to have to push down on it just a little bit so that it you know lines up with the hole. But then that goes all the way through makes it look like it's a trigger pin but it's not so and uh, okay so here now if we wanted to push the uh, the magazine safety bit back it should uh, it should actually engage oh Finger's not strong enough. There we go. And we saw that it it did clip right under the back of the uh, of the of the slide lock, and so it stays in this rear position. But basically, that means uh, you can't get a magazine in. Um, while while the guns in this takedown position so uh back to the frame uh start the trigger in just into its hole first because you'll you'll need to from an angle i think and uh then you'll be able to tip that down and in i mean the trigger kind of pulls itself a little bit while you're taking it out let's see if there's yeah so trigger into the trigger well just a little bit and then get the back end down in there and then the whole thing will slide towards the back and just drop down into place and then there's the little window in the polymer so you can read your serial number I was wondering is there secret numbers before and after that that you can't see through the polymer no there is not so that's that's so simple that it just goes in there no extra pins or anything and uh, getting this back in notice that there is a tapered side here and that's so that you can actually get in on top of those other safety bits and, and rotate them out of the way as you as you put it together so um, Um, and uh, it, you just keep rotating it and it'll keep going further and further in as it pushes past each of the little things involved in, in the takedown. Now the other thing that we can do here is 
if we watch everything that's moving when we do this, what we'll see is the safety mechanism that's currently, you know, engaged in the little hole in the, uh, in the release, what we'll see is that as we start to manipulate that, it's going to push past that. So it's actually lifting up a little bit and snap it all the way to the far side. And when I flip this back around, it's actually still caught. And it's not until I actually release the, uh, that it, that it goes back all the way. So it's pushing all that stuff along. Oh, I remember the other thing I was going to look for is it bothered me that, oh, <laughs> all right, so what I want to see here is if there is another disconnect somewhere along the way that, So my thought here is that if the sear is caught here and we pull and it drops, but I, I got to keep pulling to get the trigger disconnect on its own. So if I pull this far and that's enough to fire it, what might bump into that or what else would need to get bumped into? Is there anywhere else that's got a line on the trigger bar in such a way that it could cause it to drop. Let me look at the slide. I might have a puzzle in my hands here. So if we put this on without any of our springs and wingdings. All right. So I'm pulling down So I'm right, it definitely will come off of, it's hard, you, you, you guys can't see this, but basically if you do this with your own, you'll see that it can come off. And then as the gun cycles, to see how that disconnect is going to work. All right, so it doesn't engage anything. So technically, if you had a really light trigger pull and you were just super light on that trigger, you could drop the sear off, the gun would cycle, and you would still be holding the sear down because there's no other disconnector. That seems like a design flaw. Because what would happen then, the gun would cycle, and um, let's say you then let up, you would not actually have a hold of the sear at that point. 
So if, if it hasn't finished that disconnect, wow. That is really ballsy. Um, all right, so. Do this for everybody's benefit so you can make your own opinion tell me whether you think i'm crazy on this one or not but when the gun is being fired since the disconnector is built in to the trigger mechanism meaning that as you pull your firing pin safety that's normal your sear is going to go it's going to drop if you keep pulling the trigger you get a disconnect and the sear resets ready to catch the uh, striker when it comes forward but if you had feather light touch and you were just barely pulling the gun's gonna go off as soon as the sear dips but if you don't complete the trigger pull to the point where it goes click and resets then nothing's gonna catch the sear the gun's gonna cycle and the sear is gonna be in the fired position which is right about up here so when you let up on it and pull the trigger, it's going to go clicky, 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 but no bang. So either those are remarkably well-timed, or what? Let's see. Let's look at the angle of the sear. Does it have something to do with how the sear itself is built? In other words, if you were pulling it partially back. Like as the sear went forward, would it have the ability to push that? No. Wow, I'm going to have to see if I can't pull that off at the range one day and see if that's an actual problem or not. Because as far as I can tell, it's only the trigger pull itself that gives you the disconnect. If something came and pushed that down more, still no disconnect. If something came in on the side and pushed it down, that would be great, but nothing appears to actually do that. backward force on that or anything is going to change that. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Hmm. Oh well. There are always mysteries. Someone smarter than me will figure it out and post it in the comments and then we'll all know. But I'm wondering if, uh, if we can actually catch this gun making that as a, as a problematic state. Whereas you pull the trigger and it goes bang, but you don't get a reliable reset if you don't pull the trigger hard enough, so to speak. Let's see, why is that not going on? Am I not centered? Apparently, if you don't have the guide rod perfectly centered, it does give you a little flack. All right, so. really trying to catch it to see if I can't get it to do that. It does give you a little bit about half of a window so you can see this stuff. You know what I guess it is? 
once it's actually cocked, the trigger pull is actually much tighter because you have got you're you're holding the whole striker back, so it's probably not physically possible to have enough weight on there that when all of that pressure is released, you don't pull it the rest of the way for that disconnect. That's probably what makes it safe, is that uh, there's just no way that your finger could get the pressure off in time to prevent that reset. So anyway, that is the SIG P320. Uh, hopefully we'll see the Army version soon enough. Um, hope you didn't lose any of the tiny parts. Hope you had fun. Stay safe.